and welcome back to Digital Therapy, an interactive drawing show here on Adobe Live where our goal is to doodle and relax together while learning something new and just getting to chat and hang out. Um, my name is Alice, I'm your host, and I'm an illustrator. Um, it's great to see everyone in the chat. Hello um, to Dean and to Celine and Steve. Um, it's great to see some familiar faces. Um, and please join me in welcoming our special guest this week, Anne Alonso. Welcome, Anne. Hi, everyone. It's good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, we're on day two of our stream. And so if you're new to the if you're new to the stream, the way that Doodle Therapy works is we're on every other week here on Adobe Live this time. And every week that we're on, we bring on a special guest illustrator who um, deep dives with us into a different area of illustration. So in the past, we've had children's book illustrations, we've done lettering, color theory, and this week we are going to be designing stationery together with Anne, um, because Anne is also, in addition to being a really talented illustrator, um, she runs a wonderful lifestyle shop where she sells a lot of stationery and merchandise. So we can chat a little bit about that. Um, and also, you know, this is an interactive drawing show. so. Whenever we do a prompt, like this week we are designing um, journal covers together, you're also totally invited to draw along with us. And uh, we love to see the doodles that you make and all uh, skill levels are welcome. Um, in addition, since um, this is interactive, sometimes we'll ask the uh, audience in the chat for feedback on you know things that we're working on. Sometimes they'll be like, do you think I should use this color or this color? Um, and also, uh, in honor of it being International Women's Week as well as Women's History Month, uh, we're doing a giveaway on this show of this uh, poster that I've made for the Women's March a few years ago. So we'll get into that in just a second on how you can win the giveaway, um, our second giveaway from yesterday. Um, and yeah, if, if you're joining us live, please feel free to introduce yourself, share where you're from. And the random question of the day today is, what was the last thing that you doodled? Um, so I'd love to hear that. And um, Anne and I will also share our answers too. So. And I'm um, transitioning over to share some of your delightful work on the stream. Do you mind introducing yourself? Um, you know, telling us a little bit about your work, where you're joining us from, and what the last thing you doodled was. For sure. So uh, my illustrations come from a range of just feeling different emotions, usually joy and trying to spread joy, or on the rare occasion, sometimes I'm processing feelings of grief or sadness, because it's kind of where my art started, but sharing memories essentially or nostalgia or feelings of stories through characters. Um, the most recent thing I've doodled is some bears uh, that I probably will never use or have them see the light of day, but I've been trying to just come up with a new bear character. Oh, Don't tell cute. anyone. <laughs> yeah, you know, I really, I'd love to, you know, chat about that in, in our stream of like how you think about the characters that you're building. Are they, you know, recurring characters, part of the same universe? That's a really interesting um, topic that I don't think we've chatted about here on on Doodle Therapy before. And um, Julie Campbell says that we love your bears and Coco uh -uh. <laughs> wants to meet the 40 bear sketches. So <laughs> I think that, I think that, um, you know, I think you have to, maybe uh, share now that you've uh, told us that you've been doing these bear illustrations. Um, ah. And a little bit about me. Um, so my work is above too. I'm a muralist and illustrator and you know, I've been hosting Doodle Therapy. Um, I'm joining you guys from San Francisco Bay Area. And the last thing I doodled was a pair of rain boots. And um, it's a part of the uh, illustration that I'm doing for this week's stream. Um, 
Maria, uh, sorry, Myra says that they, they doodled a vine. That's delightful. And hello to um, Brittany Fan and to Chris Marino for, for joining us. So we're going to, you know, transition over to the drawing board. Um, do you mind, you know, Anne sharing a little bit about, you know, what you're working on, especially, I think it's really interesting to um, check in with the guest artists on the beginning of day two of these streams, because it's cool to like see how people are thinking about their piece. It's like, okay, I see this, this is what I'm going to tackle next. You know, this is what I'm thinking. These are spots I want to work on or stuff like that. Yeah, um, so this piece is actually inspired by uh, two artist friends of mine who I'd recently watched them streaming their art. Um, Coco Glez is actually in the channel here and another friend of mine, Vani, um, who had both, I was watching them stream, them drawing, and I was inspired by their colors, by their figures and by the shapes. And so I created a dreamscape that kind of emerged from that. And in the spirit of International Women's Week, these are two women who recently inspired me. So why not create a piece with a woman in it. I don't typically draw um, people because I have a bit of a fear of it for whatever reason. Um, but today and for this stream, I'm tackling that fear and I've got this sketch that I'm currently coloring right now. And it's, it's definitely in the spirit of that dreamscape of feeling peaceful and finding peace within, if that if that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and I can, I mean, I can totally already get that vibe, especially from your palette. It's very peaceful and calming. Um, I, I actually love that little pop of yellow that you've got. It's kind of nice to have this, I like that, you know, pink to blue gradient, as people who are familiar with my work may know. That's like just my favorite <laughs> color range plan. But then I think that pop of yellow is like really nice. Um, that's a little bit of, you know, accent into the, into your palette, which is cool. Um, and I also want to say, uh, you know, thanks to everyone who's sharing what they've been doodling. So Coco says they Google, I'm sorry, doodled <laughs> bakery treats. Um, Dean Gorseth says they doodled characters for pretend animated show. That's cool. Ooh. It's fun to give yourself prompts. Um, Nada Wolf, welcome Nada, uh, doodled some circus bunnies. We've got Amy as well joining us. Um, Julie says, we love that split complimentary palette and they, they are doodling <laughs> space cats, which is one of my favorite topics. So cool. I guess we're going to, you know, we'll just get started into our, um, you know, finishing our illustrations. For me, um, you know, I also decided to doodle the cover of a journal uh, as per our designing stationary theme. And yesterday we talked about how we can, um, you know, there are some vendors out there who you can order custom illustrated uh, journals, notepads, etc. from, and you can even get your artwork printed on the outside of a journal and, and use that for yourself, which I think is so cool. So for me, you know, I took some inspiration from Anne's journals and Anne is also known as Arcasian on the internet. Um, so I, I just love how, you know, beautiful and lush your illustrations are here. And I thought since 2000, 21 is going to be a year where the world is like slowly opening up. It's like a trickle right now, but I, you know, we're slowly kind of emerging. Um, I'd like to make a journal that's like an adventure log for myself for the next couple of years since we've mostly been in quarantine for the last year. And, you know, I think most of us are raring to go and have some adventures. So um, I took some inspiration from these Japanese storefronts by this illustrator, um, Mateus Urbanowitz, and I have been just drawing my own little storefront. Um, I'm working on this little character uh, who is, you know, walking in the rain, and so that's why I was drawing rain boots. Um, and I'm thinking about drawing this little dog character next. You can see my rough sketch. Um, and maybe they're like walking to the store after a you know, rainstorm and they're going to buy some Pocky or something like that. And that's the, that's an adventure I'd like to have with my, my dog, if, if we could get her over to um, Japan or Taiwan. So um, <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. And, um, oh, cool. Chris says that the last thing they um, delivered was a coffee shop. Brittany says the last thing they, that they doodled was a face. Um, oh, but they used one of those pens with different colors. Um, Shout out to Jessica and Viola for joining us. And Ellie versus Bear. Oh my gosh, Ellie versus Bear. I love your work so much. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. So thanks for, thanks to everyone um, for joining. Hi, Ellie. Hey. Cool stuff. Um, so I think yesterday, you know, we had a really nice chat about, you know, Anne's work and your story and your origin story and how you got started and how you began creating Arcasian. Um, I'm really curious, um, what are some of, you know, looking ahead of for the next year or so, what are some of your goals or your dreams for um, 2021 and, and beyond? So some of the things that I kind of thought about towards the end of 2020 that I would like to hopefully get started with, hopefully this month even, is I'd like to start streaming um, and kind yes. of building on the community that's kind of started there. I owe a lot to um, the community of people who love art, people who consume art, other artists. And I feel like that sense of community has kind of brought me to where I am today. I'm super thankful for it. And I feel like just nurturing that is a very important part to why my art is here and how it got here. So that's definitely something I want to build upon, hopefully starting this month, maybe as soon as next week, I'm not sure. Um, but that's definitely a goal for this year, a dream. And I don't know if it's Ooh. particularly to this year, it could be a future dream is to have is to create like a book of some kind and publish it, whether through a publication or um, or self-publishing too, because uh, I know that's an avenue that I used to look into. And hopefully one day just having my art in a book. I, I collect art books myself, um, so it would be nice to one day create my own. Yeah, I mean, I can totally see it now, like a Arcasian, art of Arcasian. <laughs> um book if you just you know wanted to do that already um but i can also see your work like illust uh illustrating children's books or you know picture books so yeah i can i can already see it and also ali says um that you're streaming right now and so great start to achieve your goal <laughs> oh thanks ali you're the best i'm curious like how what has been your approach to developing this community, especially, you know, in a time where in-person meetups aren't really happening. So, you know, community is, I think the like concept of community for me at least has really shifted in the last year where prior, prior to that, I really focused on in-person hosting meetups at my studio, that sort of thing. Um, but now it's kind of shifted to like digital spaces and hanging out, but like online. So I'm curious about um, how that's been for you. That's kind of where I'm looking to take it is kind of having this online space. I think streaming has, uh, now that I'm starting to engage with a lot more streamers and interacting with a lot of like their chats and their discords and even just the Creative Cuties discord, shout out to Creative Cuties. Yeah. Um, I think that that digital space helps connect us, especially during a time where it's been hard to connect with people. I think it's still tough yeah. because, you know, body language is an important part of communication, but I also truly value um, the internet for everything that it's given me. Also too, like that's how I found my husband um, as Cute. well. So it's kind of just a big overarching, I feel like digital communities and just meeting people online is such a thing to, to really not take for granted. Yeah, totally. That makes a lot of sense. And for me, I mean, it's like when I think about like these digital gathering spots, like before, um, we were talking about this yesterday too. It's like, there's a lot of internet nostalgia. Um, where when I think about AIM chat rooms or even like early days, Twitter, I feel like I've met a lot of artists through Instagram actually, and just connecting over like, Hey, I really love your work. And, you know, just kind of loosely building friendships there. And then, a really big one this year for me has been Discord and um, having a little bit more of that like chat feeling um, that I think I uh, didn't have as much previously when we were doing like more in-person stuff. So I'm grateful for that. I can feel that too. I think I miss conventions a lot though. Um, oh, cool, okay. Yeah, I've never been to a convention I before. Uh, it was really nice to have like the physical interaction um, with people. I think 
it gets like I'm scared to go back to conventions now though just because of everything but mm. when it was happening it was really really nice to actually have the in-person gratification of like wow I love your art and having that interaction with them and then being able to talk to them and get to know them yeah. and vice versa I think yeah. that it, there's something really special about that and it's kind of like that's why I'm trying to find it online and digitally too because it's a, I miss that a lot. I think that it's really important to connect with people. That's probably one of my biggest and most favorite things to do is to connect with people. Yeah, um, I think the closest thing I've gone to to a convention IRL has been zine fests. I miss zine fests, you know, and like the type oh, of those would be fun. Yeah, the type of like makers and artists that are always there. You know, you always end up meeting new people and finding new new artists and there's kind of like this like scrappiness I feel to a lot of the um like uh goods that are sold you know and you know, for example there's a I remember uh, I went to the LA zine festival and there was just this like giant pile of markers and like a giant butcher paper everyone was just drawing together and it was just a really oh, nice cute. communal yeah activity so I can't wait to get back to those things obviously safely um Ooh, Nada says, Nada Wolf says that they kind of miss art tumblers too. Um, I never, I never really did the, got really into art tumblers. I, I mostly use tumblers for like being angsty, <laughs> angsty writing. <laughs> um, back in the day. Yeah, yeah back in the day. <laughs> you know, um, uh, Myra wants to know what kind of artists do we follow on Instagram? Um... I, I mean, I think I just follow people who whose work really inspires me. And I, I find out about new artists. Sometimes, like, friends will share artists' work in their stories. Or um, someone might, like, comment or, like, follow me. And then I'll be like, oh, cool, your work's cool. And then I'll follow them back. Um, and also, like, a lot from the Explore page sometimes. I feel like the algorithm just knows what I like now. So, <laughs> yeah. I feel like the same thing happens to me. Like, I... I'm trying to think back to when I first started my Instagram page three years ago for art. And at first it was following my friends. And then it slowly, I think the explore page was starting to understand what I was liking too. Yeah. And I started it. It's kind of, yeah, because especially because with this community, everyone's sharing each other's work and like uplifting each other. And so I just felt constantly, and even now I'm still constantly exposed to new art all the time. Um, yeah. So oh, yeah, I follow, it's it's interesting because, you know, I follow so like a breadth of different artists in different styles because I absolutely admire styles that aren't similar to mine as well. Um, so yeah. it's important to, I think, just engage with what's out there. That's how we became friends, Anne, actually, right? Like, I mean- I think so. We became friends after the quarantine started, I think, recently. And then I just started following you on Instagram. And Oh, and then we were gonna do a, uh, um, merchandise swap or like a, a pin swap. We were, yes. Um, we sorry, I'm that. the one who's uh, <laughs> terrible <laughs> at that. Um, and yeah, and then, you know, just became more internet-y, internet connected. More um, frenzy. Yeah, frenzy. I remember Yvonne, seeing oh. your mural for the first time, Amy posted it um, because I was following oh. Amy. And I remember I fell in love with that mural and she tagged you in it. And I was like, I have to follow this person. Oh, and that's thanks. when I first saw your art ever. Yes, cool. I remember that moment. <laughs> thanks, Amy. Isn't it cool that like, you know, this person shared this thing and then that led to this thing. And then like friendship or, um, you know, collaboration <laughs> happened. I think yeah, it's great. I think <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, actually, I think, and we've, we've talked about this on the stream before with um, past artists, but I feel like that's how a lot of um, cool opportunities have come my way pro professionally. And also not just paid client work, but like collaborations with other people. Like, for example, my studio space, um, I share it in San Francisco with four other artists and um, it's me. And then I became internet friends with Amy through Twitter. And then one day I was just like, do you oh. want to get Boba? And I was like so nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. cool on mine. Um, and I want to be <laughs> friends. We got Boba and then um, we had an opening in our studio. And then I was like, okay, I have the perfect person. It's like Amy would be like amazing. So Amy joined our studio. And then 
um, Amy brought in Shirley and then Shirley brought in Catherine and then I brought in Connie. And so like, you know, it kind of forms this like tree of events that happens from just like the smallest little connection that you, you can make um, on the internet. Um, I feel like friends a, through Boba. Oh, so sorry. I didn't oh, know no, that. Go, I was just go quickly ahead. going to say friends through Boba <laughs> is one of the best ways to make friends, I think. Yes. Boba. Boba is like my love language now during quarantine. It's like, <laughs> I can't hang out with you, but can I send you a Boba? Um, <laughs> Jessica has a question um, that I believe you answered yesterday. Um, Jessica wants to know, how did you come up with the name Arcasian for your store? And is there a special meaning behind it? It's so unique. Um, well, thank you. So it's not a glamorous or super crazy story, but I used to play a lot more video games than I do now. And on Xbox, my gamer tag was Arcasian. And that's kind of how people knew me at the time. I'd gotten my Twitter handle under it because I made a lot of friends. I mentioned earlier on stream, that's how I met my husband. And we mm -hmm. had so many online friends from it that that was who I was on the internet. When I decided to take the plunge with art and start the business, I did actually try under a different name originally, but then all my friends were like, ah, oh, it's just weird to have you under a different tag. It's, I don't know if that's you. And mm -hmm. I was starting to question it because I don't think I even liked the other name at the time. And I just started to feel, you know what? Arcasian is just kind of the name everyone's known me as. And I feel like I'm going to continue to use that name. And so I treated it like this is Arcasian's new chapter. This is where I'm taking this online mm. identity, this other person or not person, but this entity. And I'm letting her now become this new thing in her life, which is now a business and art. I love that. And Evolution. all of that. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and Shirley, who is one of my studio mates as well, says that that's how she became friends with Amy as well, which is through a boba run. So, you know, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Internet <laughs> friends, man. Like it's a it's a real thing. Like, I mean, one of my very best friends um, I met through like a Slack group, like a social Slack group. So, um, okay. yeah, boba is self-care. Yes. Um, I was Agreed. joking with my friend that. Like, I feel like it's kind of like my, me being like a mom sort of approach sometimes where like, if I hear a friend's having a bad day, I'll be like, oh my gosh, can I send you a boba? It's like, it's like the millennial version of like, have you eaten yet? Or like the millennial version of um, an Asian mom going into your room with like chopped fruit, except this is like with boba, which is arguably has much lower nutritional value. <laughs> but yeah, that's. I actually do that too. Um, in a group of friends, uh, a girl group of friends, the small, every time one of us is like feeling really down or in a low point, the other four of us get into a private chat and are like, hey, let's group yeah. pull together. Let's get her a boba. Does any, who's got her address? Who's, who's got her flavor? And then we yeah. just do a group <laughs> order and we send them a boba to cheer them up. And sometimes we all try to ask the, um, ask the people or the whichever, because there's so many boba, different boba chains and we actually yeah. do pick ones based on flavor profiles. But, um, oh, okay. Well, like one time I think I asked them to leave, like try to draw on the cup too to make someone feel better which was really Aww. cute they actually did it so yeah that is cute yeah i i really enjoy being the picker like if they're like oh i i know that this person likes like a fruity boba or um more like yeah, yeah. tea boba so i'm like i gotcha like you know this is the spot and this is this is the one or i'll, I'll ask my boyfriend who is more of a boba connoisseur um than i am and kim says wow this sounds like a wholesome and lovely group of friends that is probably Kim from said group of friends. Um, Kim, shout out to you and to whoever <laughs> else, if any of the other girls are in there, shout out to that wonderful group of friends. Love it. Love it. Um, and thanks for sharing, you know, your, um, your goals and your dreams for your, your artistic practice. I, I, you know, I, I think it's very interesting, um, what quarantine just the last year has taught me because you know today's march 11th we're basically rounding up to about a year of um for, mo for most of us at least um in the u.s of, of being in quarantine like i remember on march 12th that was the day that i uh 
like stop doing anything outside. And um, I think that like as we look back on the year, it's really just helpful to remember that like everyone's going through this and like if it's if it's like a really difficult experience for you, like it's you're really not alone and it's it's very challenging for everyone. Um, and um, I hope I think that like progress is being made and um, you know we just got to hold on for a little longer. Um, and then for me, when I think about how the pandemic has affected my outlook on my goals, um, I feel very similarly in that now I feel even more of a strong pull towards community because before I was very focused on my personal artwork, just like me individually. Um, but what this time apart has shown me is it's very, it's so much, so important to focus and like build a strong inner life, you know, your, your inner life separate from your work of your relationships and the community that you have around you. Because at the end of the day, like when you can't do anything, like that's, that's what you have. And so one of my um, dreams that I would love is just creating spaces for artists to um, be able to like flourish in. And so that's that's been um, a goal of mine is like maybe having like a little studio space that like, or cafe or something, but I don't wanna actually run a cafe. So it's like cafe like space where like artists can go and maybe there's like art supplies or like printers there. So people can like print out their artwork and um, just have like a little artist utopia. So maybe maybe kind of one love day. that. I have like a super secret dream that I don't really ever talk about because I don't think it'll ever actually come true. But um, on the topic of boba and art spaces, uh, a sort of half joke, half if I ever could make it a reality, I'd love to one day is to run a boba cafe plus art shop plus space where people can come hang out and draw. Yeah. I already have a playlist for it that cool. I constantly um that's kind of like a nice to have in the future if you know if the opportunity ever were to present itself yeah i mean i've been um similarly i've i haven't actually done much direct groundwork for said space but i've been doing like the fun stuff for example i like looking up um <laughs> the domain names that end with like dot cafe like there are a lot of actually really cool Cute. domain names now yeah, so um, I think I bought up, I think I bought up recently Pomegranate Cafe, not, not sure. Um, I recently got Lavender.Labs for our studio. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, I got to look up, I like looking up, um, my dog's name is Mochi, so I like looking up variants of Mochi, like Mochi.Studio, Mochi.Cafe, although all those are taken right now. Um, yeah, and let's see. Oh, Nada says that um, this art cafe space sounds so ideal, and Shirley says, their retirement dream is making cafe space for friends and creatives. And Ellie versus Vera says, not a joke, a reality. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think one, okay, so one thing that I came up with randomly when I was driving the other day was, I think it'd be really cool like when I'm older, like I'm 29 now, so you know, I'm not in the place to do this right now, but maybe when I'm like, I don't know, 60 or something, um, it'd be really cool to create like an artist's fund and this fund is like privately mm -hmm. funded. So it's like by me or like friends or something, hopefully by then, you know, we've got a little, um, money to put into this. And then it's like, it's kind of like how, um, they call investors like angel investors. If you're like an individual investor, although this would be mm -hmm. like an art angel investor, but like, you're not actually investing to get like a return. It's more like you're just giving, giving someone money to to like fund right, their right, right. Like creative dream. And I think that would be cool to eventually have. Like that would that would be the final boss mode of the, you know, our creative space idea of like, creative space kind of empowers you to have like a space to come together and, and collaborate. And then like the Art Angels Fund, like it literally gives you resources to like make it happen. And um, I think that'd be cool to do when I'm like older and, you know, maybe maybe got, got my life a little bit more figured out. And yeah, I, cause I've just been thinking a lot about community and, and what it means to really foster um, strong spaces for other artists. And I think that'd be like a cool thing to do. I think that would be a super cool thing to do. And I can't wait for it to happen. 
Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I think a big part of me just really likes the name Art Angels. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm also a fan of Grimes' music. Um, so and she had an album, I think, called Art Angels. So um, it would just be cool to maybe become one in some way. Um, ooh, uh, yeah, we, I'm seeing a lot of chat in the um, chat space about starting cafes and also you know if you have any questions about what we're working on feel free to ask or the process um anna's using fresco i'm using photoshop um right now i am drawing this girl character who's like walking in the rain um and i i had a dog sketch um because i wanted to draw my dog mochi um this is actually my piece for this is going to double as my piece for um the giant robot stores dog show um so you know this whole thing is about me and my dog basically um so i'm gonna draw my dog next and then draw a couple of maybe details like got a vending machine here but that's gonna be like the fun part of like is drawing in all these details and then i gotta draw maybe like a little pocky display of um snacks where are you looking to start your journal with i'm curious to know Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I would love, that's a great question. After quarantine, um, my boyfriend and I already have a list of like places that we want to <laughs> go visit. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to like run to my friend's house and then like cry and hug everyone for, course, you know, an hour um, after being apart. Um, and then a lot of my places that I want to visit are in Asia. So I want to go to China because I want to spend time with my grandma. Um, just like live there for maybe, you know, a little bit with her. And then, um, you know, Tokyo, Seoul, Taiwan, um, a lot of like the major cities in in um, Eastern, Eastern Asia. Um, and then, you know, I want to visit friends in New York and L.A. as well. So that, that's not going to be immediately after quarantine. It'll take a little while to go to the places, <laughs> but that's, that, those are some things that I want to have on my, in my adventure log. What about yourself, Anne? Um, well, my husband and I were supposed to go to Japan last September. So Ooh. that, of course, didn't happen. Um, so as soon as it's safe to, we would like to go see Japan, hopefully not during the Olympics because that would be pretty crazy. Um, oh. But we would we just want to go see it at some point. Uh, as I briefly mentioned to you in yesterday's stream, I'm Weeb Light, so we just love Weeb Japanese Light. culture. We watched a lot of anime. We're not just going to go for anime things, though, but we, we do want to see different places. Like, we want to go up to Hakone and maybe try oh, an onsen up there. Um, there's, there's just so much that we want to do, and we had planned like lightly planned kind of some of the stuff we wanted to so hoping to one day actually get to go um still and then i also do want to see south korea one day as well my father had gone he brought back some souvenirs and he, he just keeps telling me all the time he's like you have to go to south korea the food is amazing you have to go try it i'm like okay i will at some point yeah um i have visited seoul once and I was really, really inspired by like the fashion scene mm. there. Oh my God, people are just Ooh. like bringing their fashion A game like every day. And um, not just the women, but the men, the men's fashion there is like incredible. Like you just walk out the wow. street and then you see guys just like walking out with like the most amazing floral shorts. It's like, when do you see that in San Francisco? Like never, you know? And so <laughs> I just, I just love, um, Asian men's fashion. And I actually shop a lot in the men's section and in, in Asian um, clothing stores, just cause I love, I love um, just like the styles there. Um, and I'd love to know, you know, if you're watching this live, what are, what are some things that are on your adventure log list um, for, you know, when we're able to travel again? Um, Dean says they want to go on a trip to see their family in North Dakota. And yes, I totally, mm -hmm. That totally resonates. Like I haven't seen my dad in a year, over a year now, because he went back to China um, oh. in 
like Dece late December 2019. Um, and then he was like stuck there because it was, uh, COVID was happening in China. And then he like was stuck there because it's happening in the US. So yeah, um, totally feel you. Just want to visit um, family. Julie says, I've got to go to Scotland. And Shirley says that, that um, yes, everyone in Seoul looks like they stepped out of a K-drama. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, very true, very true. Like just the style game, you know, is um, quite strong. And I think Korean food's probably one of my favorite um, cuisines. Um, Shirley says, top of my list is Japan, but also the UK. I do wondering... want to go to the UK too. Um, I have a couple of friends I need to go and visit. So I would like to pop on over at some point. I had a, a couple of friends who'd moved there uh, from Canada. So it'd be nice to see them again. Yeah. Um, also, you know, I've got a quick question for the chat. So, you know, in this drawing, I'm drawing this like girl, she's going to the convenience store. This is um, Family Mart, <laughs> the colors. If you are have been to uh, Asia, you'll know. If you know, you know. Um, and I'm trying to decide like what snacks to put in the window that she is, you know, just trying to decide between. So the Ooh. first idea I have was Pocky, maybe ice cream or um, some kind of like pastries display. Um, but I am actively soliciting suggestions. So if you have suggestions <laughs> on a um, cute uh, display of foods that you would go to the convenience store to uh, window shop for, let me know. And um, I would really appreciate the inspiration. Um, I would yeah. appreciate some snack suggestions for my next grocery trip. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Ooh, um, Celine says, here they show fruits. Ellie versus Vera says, cupcakes and ice cream. And C Coco says, mochi, which is maybe perfect because my dog's name is Mochi. <laughs> oh, Amy says, convenience store onig onigiri. Uh, I think onigiri mm. is really fun to draw. Maybe I'll put that in the like vending machine. Because you know, in, um, in Japan, sometimes they have like, the vending machines are quite legit. Like it's not just drinks. Sometimes it'll be like, a meal or something like um shrink i can't wait to eggs. see that <laughs> yeah oh my gosh um yeah thanks to celine for suggesting fruits like dragon fruits melons apples dragon fruits is one of my favorites in addition to pomegranates um calixta says boba tea popsicle Ooh, boba tea Ooh. popsicle mm. it's like two of my favorite things in one dean says coffee yes can't go wrong <laughs> and madison says this is making me so hungry which is very true. I'm curious, um, and I mean this in like an earnest way, not like a you know, look on the bright side way, but how, you know, as we look back on this year of, of being in, in, inside for the quarantine, I'm curious if there's learnings about yourself or things that you are now even more inspired than ever to do um, as a result of having this like additional, you know, space that's been imposed on us. Um, for me, I think quarantine has been really helpful, like oddly enough with my creative confidence, <laughs> because it just, it just kind of quiets, like it, it's quieted a lot of the exterior voices that I've had in my head from, from others. Um, because at the end of the day, it just showed me that like, all you have is yourself and and the people in your inner life, right? Like the stuff that I used to just get really worked up about, like, um, you know, corporate projects, they're, don't get me wrong, like they're important and, and all that. But like what really, what really came through and mattered during quarantine is like the opinions of like myself and, and my loved ones. So I think it just really like, edited out a lot of the external voices that were living front free in my head. And I just kind of started doing more of what I wanted to do artistically, which is um, a bit unexpected. And um, yeah, you know, I've talked to some friends who have said that, you know, it's inspired them to want to go back to school or to learn that new skill that they've always wanted to learn. So I'm just curious if, if, um, you've had any interesting learnings and it's also okay if you you haven't because i realize this is like a very 
an yeah. on the spot question. Traumatic My goodness. Time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think there are tons of things that I think everybody kind of learns through. Like I've never lived through something like this before. And I think gratitude is probably one of the biggest 2021 mm. end of 2020 motifs that I kind of started to pick up. Like I picked up doing a gratitude journal. Um, I did lose my grandma towards the end of 2020. So it was me too. It was oh and so you know rough timing to lose someone in your family and it like brought back like all of the trauma that I'd gone through after losing my mom so it was kind of like rejuvenating the feelings of what I was grateful for for the people that are in my life who are still there for me even in these really hard times and I think a lot of that is is just remembering like I I am so thankful for so many things even though times are really tough right now and it's really hard and I've had a hard start to 2021 um there are still things that kind of make their way through and without them I wouldn't be here I'm really grateful for so many of the wonderful new friends old friends rekindling of old friendships that have happened because of quarantine um I think gratitude is one of the biggest things that I really just motifed for me personally. Yeah, that's um that's super true and I'm really sorry about your loss. Like it's it I'm was I'm sorry very... about yours as well. Thanks. Yeah, it's you know, it's really hard to experience something like that during um quarantine. It's 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 yeah. very strange. Um Yeah, you know, I think when the thing one thing that I I feel like I've gotten um and this is like this has like a positive ending. I, I know it's a little bit of a dark topic, <laughs> but um, you know, chatting about um, passings. But like when my grandma passed, I, you know, during normal times, I would have just flown straight back to China and just to be with her. Mm-hmm. First flight back, you know, drop everything. Like nothing is more important. But obviously, you had to like watch from afar, and it was initially very difficult because it's. It's like the world is like continuing and you're kind of like helplessly sitting inside. But I started to feel this um, sense of like my grandma being with me um, because I couldn't Mm. go be with her. And this like message that I kept hearing from from her or from the force or something was like, you know, your life is like so precious. Like, I, you know, I want you to like go for it. And um, it's kind of like all of those barriers that were between us when um you know she was alive like language barrier cultural barrier generational barrier um for example I don't think she um really understood my job but it's like Mm. all of those things like melted away and I could feel her like with me and just encouraging me and reminding me that like life is really precious and like you know we just gotta like go for it in life and um that's been a very strong and unexpected lesson that I've gotten from this quarantine time of like being a part of just like realizing what's important and just, yeah, you know, life's really precious. Like you just gotta, you gotta go for it. (laughs) And, um, yeah, it's worth it. Like, yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned like being able to feel her. I think that's like an interesting part of grief in general. Um, it's just kind of occasional moments when all of a sudden, you just feel this rush of something that you can't really explain, but it's a feeling that you have and it does something for you. And for me, it was definitely a huge motivation thing. Like it was kind of like, I do uh, feel very much like I do a lot of what I do with my art for my mom, even though she's Mm. no longer here. It's kind of like I, I do these things because one of the things she told me before she passed is like, I just want to make sure that you can take care of yourself. And so Mm. I can't ever stop thinking about that. And I feel like I am constantly trying to take care of myself, not just physically and not just my health and not just financially, but like even with myself emotionally, with my art and how I'm expressing these things and how I've been processing that grief. So I always... In, in not to morbidly say that I like to talk about it, but I like to share that experience because I think it's important because everybody loses a loved one at some point in their life and it's hard to go through by yourself. Yeah. Um, being able to share these things with other people is has been one of the biggest reliefs for me. And I always hope that it's a relief for someone else when I do share because the saddest thing would be having to deal with it on your own 
it's so hard. It's so tough. I know for me, it was like really rough to kind of lose my grandma more recently because it brought back everything. And I, mm. in a way, felt sad for my mom, even though she wasn't there, of course, because it was like, that was her mom that was passing yeah. away. And that's kind of where a lot of the sadness came from as well. And I'd done like art pieces for it, for that too. I feel like that was my way of kind of getting some of those things out. It was like that moment, that feeling of my mom just being like, hey, there's a lot going on, get it out. And so I would. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally feel that. Like I feel my grandma and if you have an aging grandma, you might know, can be able to like project. <laughs> um, but like, I, I just have an image of my grandma going like, yeah, you know, like thumbs up <laughs> kind of, you know, it's almost like an anime, but you know, she would do that like, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's just the, the vibe that I have. But I, I feel like, um, I feel like it's a message that we can all take. Um, and so I, I've also been trying to share that with friends too, especially as we round around the last stretch of this quarantine um, of like, you know, now now we're about to re-enter, right? And um, what are the things that maybe before you held back a little bit on, but, um, you know, I'm just, I'm here to channel my grandma saying like, life is really precious and you just gotta go for it sometimes. I love um, that. Yeah. Also not to change the subject too much, but um, Jessica wants to know <laughs> how I got this grainy filter effect on my drawing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great question. So um, I'll bring my layer panel over. Oh, you'll, you get to see my lovely layers panel, which has a million layers in it. Um, so I have this uh, layer up here, um, which was originally, um, let me try to, I can, I can try to remake it. So I think I just put down a, um, a gray color like, like this. And then, um, I applied various smart filters to it. So the way you do that is you convert it to a smart object and then, um, you can add, uh, these various effects like, um, add noise. And so a really easy way, if, for example, I'm going too fast, or if someone mentioned this and you didn't see how they do it is just, um, Go to, go to help and then go to search and then just type in the thing. Oh, oops, that didn't work. Um, yes, go to, and then just type it in and then um, you'll be able to find the effect. So here you can see that I did a blur. Um, so I did like a Gaussian blur. Um, and then I also did add noise, just add noise. And so you can see I'll zoom in, you know, it adds a little bit of the noise. And then I think I chose monochromatic to make it um, black and white. Otherwise it looks kind of like the t a TV noise um, effect. So, and then, um, you know, I added a little bit of a Gaussian blur to, you know, just blur it up a little bit. Otherwise it's a little too staticky. Um, and so I, I won't go through all of that, but then, you know, you do that. And then, um, and then I, put it on as an overlay layer. So if I don't have it on, it looks a little bit more like digital, um, which is cool because I this is digital. Um, but then when I throw it on there, I, I feel like it's a bit more like, um, you know, I printed it out and I like maybe ran it through the Xerox machine once and it has a little bit more of that like printy kind of effect. Um, so yeah, I, I like to put that on. Um, especially for these kinds of illustrations where I'm drawing like a little scene and maybe it feels a little bit like slice of life or nostalgia-y um, and it kind of gets that effect. Um, thanks for Yvonne. Um, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, by the way, for saying the illustrations look lovely. You know, we've got a few minutes left in the stream, so I do want to um, shift really quickly to uh, this giveaway um that was promised so about a, a two, three years ago i designed this mad kitty poster for the women's march um and Ooh. it is originally a risograph and so in honor of it being women's history month as well as international women's week um we're going to do a giveaway for this print and the way that you can enter is um if, from now until let's say four minutes from now it's like 5 22 ish Oh, sorry, sorry, 352-ish, 352-ish. Um, if you say the word doodle in the chat, you will be automatically entered to uh, receive this print in the mail for free. 
it is it will be a five by seven inch print that I will mail to you um, and uh, Sam our wonderful mod will um, you know randomly select someone and announce it and then it will be up to you to message me with um, and then I will send you a form with your asking for your um, your mailing address so yeah doodle it up doodles in the chat doodles in the chat doodles oodles of doodles thanks uh madison for saying thankful for doodle therapy that's really nice oh. um you know we've got about five minutes left so i'm a little I can't sad believe that oh my gosh I know. I'm sad we didn't get to talk about my favorite topic that we were discussing before the stream, which is I have this theory <laughs> that a lot of lessons that you one can learn from dating and relationships can actually be applied to client relationships. For example, um, if you if you've been single recently, you'll know that what the kids are calling it as ghosting is when you know somebody. <laughs> uh ghosts you like they they stop responding to you or um breadcrumbing is when they um it's like they partially ghost you right they leave little breadcrumbs for you to wow. appease you right but they're not really responding or full all in and i actually think that you can encounter potential clients who may ghost you or they may breadcrumb you um and just like in dating I think it's good to have an attitude of like, I only want to date people who I'm like all in for, you know, I'm just psyched to, to be with them. And it, I think the same thing can be said for clients. Like you do your best work with clients that you're like all in for that, who are also all in for you. And so uh, we were talking about this before the stream and, um, and uh, I'm sad that, you know, we've run out of time to discuss this uh, juicy topic, but it's really one of my favorite favorite uh, topics, which is- I think funny. it's so relatable um, yeah. because just like with any relationship, if you're like, if you have a client and they're new and they're fresh and you're excited to work with them, it's like you have that honeymoon phase, like you would in a relationship yeah. normally. And it's kind of like, you're so jazzed about the work. And then maybe as things go on, maybe sometimes the client ghosts you and potentially doesn't pay you or yeah. they become really difficult to work with because the, the relationship just isn't mutual. It's kind of like, you don't want to be in a relationship that's give and take. You don't want to have a client who's just, or sorry, you do want to be in a relationship that's give and take. Sorry. You don't yeah. want to be in a relationship that's just all take. One. And you don't want yeah. a client who just all take either. Um, so I think, I think that's just like relationships in general, like even in your friendships. Um, so especially in your freelance work, make sure that you're, you know, setting boundaries with your clients because that's yeah. something that i think in this industry especially if you're new and starting out people don't do that and it's really important to make sure that you protect yourself just as much like you would in a relationship hopefully protect yourself do it with your clients too totally totally um so maybe we'll have to just uh save this topic for a future doodle therapy <laughs> um but it's really one of my favorite topics to talk about because it's like it's what i chat about with friends anyways like dating and stuff um and uh, congratulations to Madison, um, who won the print giveaway. So please contact me um, on Behance. Um, I will also message you with a form to send in your um, mail preferred mailing address, and we'll get that over to you. And Golden Rose says, NRE is new relationship energy, where everything seems shiny and then life happens. That's very true. Very, very true. Um, I also want to take a relationship energy. Yes. And I also want to take a chance to shout out um, Anne's work. You know, Sam, our wonderful mod, has posted Anne's um, links several times in the chat. Um, but, uh, you know, Thank if you, you are looking for Anne's work, um, you can find her on the inter internet at, at Arcasian um, on Twitter. And then on Instagram, I believe it's Arcasian underscore underscore. Um, and if you ended up actually doodling along with us, um, I would really love to see your doodles. Or if you have any questions, cause you're watching the stream, not live about you know, how did you, how'd you do this effect? Um, feel free to 
uh, message me. I'm at by Alice Lee um, on Twitter, Instagram, Behance. And I'm happy to answer any questions, um, you know, about the process or, uh, you know, I guess life in general. Happy to chat. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, we're coming around to the end of the stream. Um, Anne, do you mind zooming out and sharing, you know, the piece that you For made? For sure. Oh, I'm sad I didn't get to finish it. I thought we had more time. Oh, it looks great. Well, these are our oh. two pieces, um, side by side, an adventure log and a gratitude journal. Um, and I'm grateful for Anne for joining us. Thank you so much, Anne, as well as for like the real talk, which I feel like is, you know, one of my goals Always. with doodle therapy is like, <laughs> just get into the real talk. Um, and also thanks to everyone for joining us and for being so enthusiastic in the chat. Um, special shout out to Sam, our wonderful moderator, and Jeffrey, who is uh, running our tech studio side of things. Um, it's been great. And we will be back on um, at this time next, next Wednesday and Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. So until then, have an awesome rest of your day. And yeah, bye everyone. Bye everyone.